So type nine, type nine is the peacemaker, the mediator. Um, and I describe this as like the comfortable armchair of the Enneagram. These are the people who get along with everybody. You can put a type nine in between two groups of people who hate each other. And type nines are very soothing. They're good listeners. They will turn and they will really listen to one group and be able to really step into their shoes and understand, ah, this is why they believe that. This is where they're coming from. And then they can turn and hear the exact opposite set of arguments, hear completely the other side. And they can really step into that position as well. So these are people who are quite gifted at being able to bridge kind of conflict and gaps. These are people who can do peace. They can do reconciliation. They can find common ground. Um, they're gifted that way. So this is one of the things that they bring to the world. Uh, what happens with nines is they are really good at tuning into everyone else and they often step off of their own center. So a lot of type nines at some point in their life will look up and think, oh, how did I get here? Um, I have spent so much time making sure my spouse was happy, my employer was happy, my parents were happy. I've done everything everybody else wanted, but I haven't done any of my own things. And I don't even really know what those are anymore. So the attention going out to keeping everybody else in the environment happy, that's where the attention goes. And what it ends up doing is often disconnecting the person from their own desires. So nice can get confused actually about what they want. So these are people who are good listeners. They're mellow. They've got a soothing kind of presence. Um, they are extremely adaptable, but they are adaptable in a way that looks a lot different than, for example, the type three. Nines adapt because they step into an environment and they'll just be able to find the place where they've got common ground and then that'll be what they present. So they're very, very authentic, but they just come into like whatever situation and kind of mold themselves into whatever you know within them is going to fit in that environment so a lot of nines will say i kind of like that i can go anywhere like i know i'm going to be able to plug into a situation and get along with people i know i can do that and they can these are people who procrastinate um so nines are sort of famous for putting off important things so maybe a nine knows i need to change jobs i'm really unhappy with my job uh, but this is the weekend I'm going to clean the garage instead. So they'll kind of know, okay, this is what I need to do. And they'll be busy, but they'll just be doing something that has nothing to do with that actual goal. Nines do not like conflict. They are extremely conflict avoidant. And a lot of nines will say, I feel like I vanish in the face of a conflict. It's very anxiety provoking for me. So for the rest of us, like it's hard to understand the intensity that conflict can have for a nine, but they really feel it and they feel it somatically. Often they'll say like my body clenches, my stomach gets tight. I just don't feel well. Um, so the gift. So actually I'll start with the habit of attention. The habit of attention is they're going towards harmony and they're moving away from conflict. So kind of like I just described. So they love harmony. They love these peaceful environments and they're really uncomfortable with conflict. The gift kind of falls right out of that. They are really good at creating harmony. They can find, okay, this is the where those two people aren't gonna get along. So let's leave that, but here's where they could and let's focus on that. So again, they're very, very good at being able to kind of de-escalate. Um, so those are the things, uh, nines are considered the most powerful type in the Enneagram. So these are people who, when they, actually get to a state of you know high self-awareness high consciousness where they can tolerate healthy conflict they can move mountains they're amazing leaders because they're the ones who can really hear everybody and make everybody feel included and get everybody to move in a solid line and nines have a power and a stubbornness like if they decide something is going to happen it's like the mountain has spoken like there's just a power to them a groundedness that's extremely unmovable like they will they will make it happen uh they're not going to get knocked off you know their balance so that can be part of the nine as well um so that's kind of the high level overview and then i go through the six facets so facet number two is the center Nines are in the body center, the instinctive center, which means that first they're having the experience of life somatically. They first feel it in their body. This is a very instinct driven person, someone who really kind of gets a lot of good messaging from their own body. 
And like all of the body types, the sensitive issue for type nines is anger. So, and this is funny because nines will often say, I don't know what you're talking about. Like I'm the least angry person I know. And that may in fact be true because what nines do subconsciously is they under express anger. So something will happen that frustrates them, that makes them angry. But what the psychology does is the psychology says, if I express that, that I'm upset, that distorts harmony. Now we don't have harmony in the environment and I want harmony. So I'm not gonna say anything, I'm gonna let it go. And then, so that's happening on the outside. Now they've tolerated behavior they didn't like. And then on the inside, they're convincing themselves it's not really that big of a deal. It was okay that I let that go because if, of course, if it were a big deal, then how would they be okay with that? So they're spending a lot of energy first tolerating something they don't like and then convincing themselves it's okay. And this can drain them. So this is how nines will often say, I just feel tired all the time. I wanna be alone. Um, a lot of times that is a nine who's actually not expressing anger when they should be. So when nines start to express anger, again, in a healthy way, they usually start to feel like a bump of energy. They start to feel energized again. Um, so that can be going on, but it is in the body center. So then we'll move to the wings. As you know, you are your type, but you are influenced by one of the numbers next to you. So it's either a nine with an eight wing or a nine with a one wing. A nine with the eight wing, the word they use is the referee. So again, habit of attention is 100% nine. They want harmony. They don't like conflict, but this is someone who is a little bit more action oriented. This is someone who can be more blunt, more direct, uh, and more focused on goals. And what this ends up looking like kind of in real life is someone who's very tolerant, very mellow, very go with the flow. And then suddenly they'll put their foot down and get really solid, like, no, that's not okay. And they'll be quite direct and blunt. And then they go back to being really mellow. And so it almost is, it, it feels like a moment of eightness. And then they go back to kind of the mellow, soothing, um, that type of thing. So that's what you'll see in the referee. Um, the nine with the one wing, they, the word they use is the dreamer. And this is somebody who is orderly, has an eye for improvement, an eye for efficiency. So kind of all of the one influences, more principled and more understated. So this is the person who is less likely to really advocate directly for themselves. They're more indirect, they're more understated, but this is someone who might take that unexpressed anger and now it manifests in terms of orderliness or efficiency. So this is someone who can kind of seem one-ish, but again, the attention is really going to harmony um, and away from conflict. So that's the dreamer. So those are the, the wings. Uh, and now we'll move to the subtypes. Uh, so the self-preservation subtype, uh, the word they use is appetite. And this is the most introverted of the nines. So sometimes these nines will almost feel like maybe I'm a five. Um, this is someone who can actually retreat quite a bit. These are people who sort of enjoy the simple things in life. Life. They like good food. They like good drink. They like a comfortable environment, good company. They don't, they kind of have simplistic needs. They want, they get a lot of joy from the simple pleasures. Um, their attention moves more away from the deeper needs in life because at some point they kind of got this internal, created an internal narrative. I'm probably not going to get it anyway. So don't focus there. Focus on the things that I really can get, which are a comfortable environment. Um, these are very concrete people, again, living kind of basic lives uh, that they're getting a lot of enjoyment out of and the most introverted of the nine. So if you're a nine who sometimes thinks, gosh, could I be a five? That could be pointing towards the self-preservation um, instinct. And the word is appetite. So kind of the opposite then is the social uh, nine, which the word they use is participation. And this is a nine who sometimes thinks that they're a seven. Um, so this is somebody who actually, they're wanting harmony and they express that through merging kind of through a group. So this is somebody who will often have a group that they're involved in. Um, they're more talkative, they're more social. This might be the person who's organizing for the group. Um, this is somebody who really kind of gets a lot of their, uh, their need for harmony from this group participation. But if you talk to these nines, they'll often sort of say, I kind of feel like I don't fit in and I'm not sure that the group wants me. So I'm going to work hard to kind of earn my right to be in the group. 
the group often, when you, you talk to the people who are in the group, they'll say, what are they talking about? This is the most lovely person ever. But the nine's internal psychology isn't quite sure. There's a little bit of anxiety around, this is my group, but do I belong? Have I done enough to support the group? So it's someone who can be really supportive um, in that way. And this is someone who will place the, the needs of the group over their own needs. Um, so that can be happening as well. So that's the social subtype. And then we'll move to the sexual, the intimate subtype. The word they use is fusion. Um, and this is the nine that merges the most. So this is a nine that sometimes gets confused and thinks that they are a four. And I should just do a quick parenthesis. A lot of times it takes nines a while to find themselves because this is someone who's so good at stepping into the position of everybody else that they kind of see themselves in everybody. <laughs> so like, maybe I'm a one, maybe I'm a two, I have all of that. Um, so it can be really confusing for nines. Um, this is a nine who seeks harmony through the connection through a few intimate partners, like a few close people in their life. So it might be family members, it might be their actual partner, it might be their children, but it's someone who, it's a small group that they're very, very bonded to. Um, this is somebody who can actually kind of have confusion around boundaries. There can be true confusion about where do I end and you begin? Like they kind of just mash together. This is someone who's very sensitive to the, the needs and the conditions of those people who are important to them. Um, and this is somebody who can, have a difficult time finding their own internal compass because their attention is so focused on the people they're close to, it can be hard for them to really tune into their own needs. Um, so that can be going on sometimes. Um, so those are the subtypes. And like I said, you know, it's a stacking. So often you'll, if you're a nine, you'll hear yourself in all of them, but there'll be one that's more dominant and often one that's a bit weaker. And then their stacking is the dominant one, the middle one, and then the weaker one. Some people are more evenly stacked. Some people, there's a greater distinction. It's a very personal question, um, but that's the subtypes. The facet number five, um, so stress point, security point. So we call it stress and contraction point these days. So when nines are under pressure, when they are stressed, when they are not feeling well, what does that look like? They go to type six. Um, so this is someone who's usually really mellow, kind of balanced, who suddenly becomes very doubtful, very kind of catastrophic thinking, very uncertain. So they have, they have a lot of internal confusion and they can't decide. Everything kind of feels like the wrong decision. This is somebody who might start asking, what do you think? What do you think? Like there's just a lot of um, anxiety, a lot of fear of decision-making and a lot of indecision and uncertainty. Um, so that can be going on when they're feeling stressed. When they are feeling relaxed, when someone is in a place of expansion, security, what does that look like? Um, they move to type three. So again, as I said, type nines are the most powerful type in the Enneagram when they are in a place where they're feeling good, expansive, secure, and they're highly self-aware, they get focused, they get goal-oriented, they start going after their things. They might even talk about being competitive. Nines are not famous for being competitive, but sometimes in these moments when they're just feeling good, like everything's going my way, I'm going to go for it. They go to type three, the achiever, when they're feeling quite expansive. Um, and then the final uh, facet, the levels of awareness. Um, so as I've discussed, there are nine distinct levels. We're always going for the top level. Throughout the day, you're gonna even be changing levels. So it's not a stagnant thing. It's very, very dynamic. But what you're trying to do is always be present. The more present you can be, the higher your awareness and the more you can relax your habit of attention, the more present you're going to be. So what is a type nine who's very present, very self-aware, really has relaxed their habit of attention? This is someone who is directed, who is clear, who is balanced, who is accepting, who is receptive, who is present to themselves. They are tuned into their own initiatives. This is someone who is able to engage in healthy conflict, they might not like it, but they're absolutely able to do it. And this is someone who's um, autonomous. So this is someone who really doesn't need, you know, can kind of function as a standalone. They're that clear, that directed. <clears throat> so this is what that looks like at that high level, the high, the top three levels. In the middle, okay, defenses are starting to tighten, starting to 
habit of fixation is starting to, to come into focus. What does that look like? This is someone who's accommodating. This is someone who's indirect. This is someone who can be more passive. Uh, this is someone who is agreeable, but often agreeing to things they really don't want to do. This is someone who can be vague. Uh, this is someone who might be passive aggressive. So again, nines have a hard time saying no because they don't want to disturb harmony, but if they don't want to do something, maybe they just don't do it. So there's a passive aggressive behavior that can come out. Uh, and these are people who can be stubborn, avoidant, and sometimes self-medicate. And when I say self-medicate, they eat, they drink, they watch TV, they sleep, they do things to just not deal with reality. Um, and that can be what's going on uh, in the middle level. A fixated type nine, somebody who's really stuck in their habit of fixation. They are really acting out their habit of attention. What does this look like? This is someone who is drained. They're tired a lot. And again, they're tired because they're convincing themselves all these things that are a problem are not a problem and they are a problem. Uh, this is someone who can be confused in their thinking. This is somebody who can have a lot of difficulty pursuing goals. They're just, there's a lot of internal confusion. This is somebody who can be neglectful of themselves, their appearance, their health will start to just be neglected. They can numb out. Um, narcotization is a word that they use. So it's like they just numb out of life. They kind of can become lethargic. Sloth is a word that is used and they can almost be like zombie-like behavior. So this can be where they just check out completely in the very extreme case, someone who's almost catatonic. It can also be someone who's just looking away, who just isn't dealing with reality. Um, so that can be what it looks like when the person is fixated. Um, as I you know, always wanna remind us, what we're going for are those higher levels. And as I've said before, at those higher levels, it's very hard to know a nine is a nine. Like they're not behaving that way because they're coming through clear and direct and purposeful. While internally they don't like conflict, they're still willing to go there if it's something that needs addressing. Um, so in a world where everyone was highly self-aware, we'd have a very hard time knowing what somebody's Enneagram type is. Um, 